We began a series a couple of weeks ago simply entitled The Heart Life. We talked about how our hearts are changed by the decisions that we make. Uh, we, we said that you can't, no one can really change your heart. You have to change your own heart. God, you, you have to allow the Lord to change your heart. And we said if you change your heart, then you can change your life. And, and it's not a matter of the destination. You know, you see the salt life and camp life and uh, shoe life. You know, that's for the women, the shoe life. And you know, But it isn't those things that really get us and make us happy. It's, it's the heart. If the heart's happy, then, then every, everything else can be happy. In fact, let me say it this way. If mama's heart's happy, then everybody's happy. Amen? Amen. <laughs> so you you got to have your heart in the right place, and your heart has to be well, and your heart has to be whole in order for you to be blessed. In, order, in fact, your heart actually even has to be right in order for you to receive the Word of God. Uh, you, you can, you, you've got to have the right heart in order to even take in what God has to say. So what I want to do today is I want to continue on this theme called the heart life. And I just want to read you a, a story right out of the Word. We're going to begin there in Luke chapter 8. And it's Jesus. And Jesus is talking about the heart. He's talking about uh, basically how to have the right heart. And here's what he says. It says, while a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town, from, uh, town after town, he told this parable. He said, a farmer went out to sow seed. And as he scattered the seed, some fell among the path and it was trampled on. And the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked out the plants. Still other seed, listen to this, fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop and a hundred times more than what was sown. How'd you like to give a dollar and get a hundred dollars back? That, that'd be good, wouldn't it? Well, that's what this parable's talking about. It's talking about sowing the right things, reaping the right harvest. But then he says this, Jesus gives the, the, the parable or the meaning of this parable to his disciples. He says, the seed is the word of God. Those along the path are those who hear and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their heart so that, listen to this, so that they may not believe and be saved. So here's what that means. Someone heard the word, but because the devil came and took the word away from them, they didn't believe and they weren't saved, okay? That, that means people have heard it, they just didn't receive it and become a believer. Those on the rocky ground are those who received the word with joy, and when they heard it, but they had no root. They believed for a little while or for a while, but in the, in the time of testing, they fall away. The seed that fell among the thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart, who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering produce a crop. I, I've always found this verse very interesting to me. Here's what it says. I'm going to read it to you again. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart. So Jesus is talking about them having a noble and good heart. Well, I'm like, well, how do you get a noble and good heart? How do, the rest of them didn't have one. How do you get one? Then, he, then he, he explains how you get one. He says this. He says they hear the word. Well, you know what? So did the people that didn't believe. They heard the word. Well, that, that don't help you. How many of you know you, you can know the word? That won't help you? Let, let, let me help you. If you believe just because you know the Bible, that means you, you've obtained something. The, the devil knows the Bible. So you can hear the You can hear me preach every week. That won't fix you. That won't change you. That won't change your heart. But the word says here that you have to hear the word, but then you also have to retain it. You, you can't just hear it. You've got you to take it and go, okay, this is not only the word. I'm going to retain this. I'm going to keep this. This is mine. I'm going to hang on to this. And then it says, it, it takes it a step further and says, and by persevering, you've got to persevere to produce a crop. And we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. But here's, here's what I want you to understand. The challenge with the story is not the sower. It, you know what? I, I love that because it ain't my fault. <laughs> I'm, if I'm sowing the Word of God, it ain't my fault. If you're sowing the Word of God to other people and they don't receive it, it's not your fault. If Jesus himself were sowing the Word, it isn't Jesus' fault. If the church is sowing the Word, it's not the church's fault. It's whether you retain it or not and persevere that you grow in your heart. And get but So the first challenge is the challenge isn't the sower. The sower, whether he's good or bad or in between, doesn't really matter. The challenge with the story is not the seed either. 
See, the seed, according to this parable, is the Word of God. The Word of God from Genesis to Revelations is God inspired. God is the one that put it together. Right. God is the one that made it happen. So you can't you can't blame it on the Word. If things aren't changing in your heart, change things aren't changing in your life. It isn't the sower and it isn't the seed. No, the real challenge here, the real challenge is the heart in which the seed falls on. So let, let's break that down. I'm gonna do it really quick. The, the, there's the path soul, and that's the that's the that's that path that you've been digging or someone has had walked on over and over again so that when the seed is sown, it, it doesn't get into the ground. And that person, they, they receive the word at first, but the devil comes and takes it away from them so that they don't believe and they're not saved. So there's a lot of people, they have to hear the word several times in order to get through that, get that seed into and through the path where they can actually receive the word. And then there are the people that have the rocky the rocky heart. that they're, they're saved, but when life begins to throw them a curve or two, they lose heart and they don't produce. Now, these people that have rocky rocky hearts are not people that are not saved. I, listen, I'll be the first to tell you, I got some real soft place in my heart towards some people, and I got some, I got some places I need to work on. Because some people are just... I say it every week. Some people are mean. You know, I, you know, some people just... If you let them, they'll hurt you over and over again. You know, you've got to get away from those folks. Right. So, so it doesn't mean they're not saved. It just means that they're not producing. They're, they're, you're not creating the crop. You're not, you're not, there's not a hundredfold. There's maybe not even tenfold because of that place. And then there are the people that have hearts that have thorns. And these are people that are saved, but their heart becomes full of other things in life so that they don't produce. Have you ever noticed that any time you try to do something for God, there's a hundred distractions? Yep. There's seeds popping up everywhere. I mean, there's, there, there's thorns popping up everywhere, isn't there? Try to read your Bible. Yeah. You know what? Do anything you want to, but try to sit down and read. I'm going to read my Bible for 30 minutes. You'll get five phone calls. You try to meditate on the Lord. Get, get before the Lord and say, you know what? I'm just going to seek after God. Man, I mean, if thorns will spring up everywhere. It just seems like the enemy's going, oh, they're going to get the prey. We've got to get, we've got to get over there and distract them. So this is talking about people that, that become distracted by the things of life and, and the worries of life and the cares of life and all that. And then he says, then there's the good soul. Th these people have a good heart. And they hear the word, they retain the word, and then by persevering, they, they just increase. Those are the people that are driving the Escalade that on front of it says, blessed. That's those people. It just seems like you give them one little seed and all of a sudden they got a crop, baby. You give them one little thing of corn, they got a hundred, they got a hundred ears of corn in a few months. Yep. And you look at and you know what? If you're not careful, you can become envious of them. You kind of go, well, how do they get that? Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you so you can get there. Now, but make sure, I want to make sure I'm talking to the right people. How many of you here today want to have the right heart? Amen. Okay. How many of you here today want to produce a good crop in your life? And there's another whole sermon about what kind of crop we want to produce. But I, I, I believe we want, to, we want to have the right heart and we want to produce the right crop. So how do you get to the place where you have this noble and good heart? How do you get your heart in that place? Jesus uses soul to explain our heart. So here's the first principle I want you to get. If you're going to have a great heart, if you're going to have a wonderful heart, if you're going to have a heart that's going to be able to receive the Word of God, the first thing you have to do is you have to till the soul. Till the soul. Let me give you an example. When I was a kid, growing up uh, 13, 14 years old, my dad had a garden tiller. Now this wasn't those, one of those kind that you had the stuff behind you just walk casually down. No, no, no. no. My dad had the ones where all the gears were in the front, all the chopping was in the front, and it was more like this. You know, and, and he would say, I want you to till the garden. I'm like, Dad, we tilled it yesterday. He goes, I know, but I'm trying to get the soil ready for the seed. I need you to till it up. So I said, Dad, we've already done that. He goes, no, I need you to till it more. I'm like, Dad, give me something else. And he goes, no, get out. So I'm out. I mean, I hated it, man. I, I hate it even now. I even think about talking about it. Get out there and just <laughs> that tiller. And you hit a big rock and you turn your side. It, I actually turned it over a few times. I, I think I did it on purpose, but I, I was trying to break it. I was trying to destroy it. You couldn't destroy that tiller. <laughs> But here's what I found out about that. If you're going to have the right heart, you're going to have to till the heart. You're going to have to plow up the heart. How many of you know your heart can become a path? 
Your heart can get hard. Your heart can have things in it. And, and you have to say, you know what? I can't let my heart stay that way in order to receive the Word. So I've got to get the right heart. I've got to let God touch my heart. So what you have to do is you have to teal up that heart. And I hate to say this, but, but, but i got to be clear. You have to teal up the heart. Right. Well, my, you don't know my wife. She does pretty good. No, 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 no. You have to teal it up. You have to say, my heart may not be in the right place. My heart may not be doing what it needs to do. So therefore, I need to teal up my heart. Well, how do you do that? Well, the first thing you do is you can teal it up by worship. When you worship, you begin to teal the heart. You begin to make the heart pliable to God. When you begin to pray, then you're tealing up your heart. When you get on your face and say, God, I just need you to touch me. I just need you to work on me. I just need you to change me. I'm not talking about praying for a new car. I'm not talking about praying for a new house. I'm talking about God creating me. David said it this way. Created me, oh God, a clean heart. Create in me, oh God, a right spirit. See, when you begin to pray those kind of prayers, then what you're doing is you're actually tilling up your heart so that when God drops the Word in you, when He drops the seed in you, it begins to produce a product. It begins to produce some crops. You have to till that soil. Yes, amen. And it ain't fun. It ain't fun tilling. It ain't fun getting out there and saying, hey, listen, I've got to do something different. I've got I've to till the soil and make it to where I have my heart in the right place so that the Lord can do something in my life. And it's awesome when things work. But today, we ain't working, so we're going to go to plan B in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Somebody say it. Well, if he knew his notes, he wouldn't. Have to need them. No, I got so much material, I can't remember it all. Here's what Hosea 10 says It says, Sow righteousness for yourself. And it says, Reap the fruit of unfailing love. And he says this, And break up the unplowed ground, for it is time to seek the Lord until he comes and showers his righteousness on you. You know what that says to me? That says it's my responsibility for me to go out here and till the ground. And we till it with worship. We till it with prayer. We till it with prayers like, God, if there's anything in my heart that isn't pleasing to you, I ask you to remove it out of my life and remove it out of my heart. It's when you pray prayers like, God, search my heart, O oh God, and know my thoughts and lead me in paths of your righteousness. And see, nobody can do that for you. You have to do that for yourself. You have to say, God, I want you to till up my heart and make my heart the way you want it to be. you got to get the tiller out of the shed. <laughs> well, i got a tiller. Yeah, get it out. How much tilling are we talking about? We're talking about major tilling. We're talking about if you're going to have the right heart, you've got to let the Word of God and you've got to let your prayer life till up your heart because the world is coming at you with all kinds of stuff that is saying, let's just pile some more stuff on you. Let's pile some more things in your heart where you don't have room for God. See, the, the, the times in the old times of, of revival were times that were set aside where we said we're going to seek after God so that God can melt our hearts where God can mold us and shape us into what He wants us to be. And you have to till that heart. James says it this way. He, he gives clear instructions on how to do that. He says, submit yourself then to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. He says this, come near to God and he'll come near to you. Now he's talking to believers when he says this, wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and well. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. So what am I saying? I'm saying, listen, when you till the ground, sometimes you just get on your face and say, God, yes. I just want to well, I want to mourn, right. I want to seek after you so that you can change my heart and make my heart pliable so that I can grow a crop that is, that is pleasing to you and that blesses the community and blesses my family. Amen. Yes. And then you have to remove the rocks. Man, if you've lived on this planet long enough, cancer can come by your house. Right. I mean, sometimes rocks are just thrown at you. If you've been around long enough, you've had people that don't like you, and you're very likable. 
and you're doing all the right things. And the devil says, I need you to chunk a rock at them. Hit them in the head, would you? And they graciously smack you in the head. Some people feel like the calling of God on their life is to throw rocks at people. <laughs> in Jesus' name. People do that. You ever met people? Well, you ever, anybody, yes. listen, if anybody ever comes up to you and says, listen, I, I know this may be offensive to you, but I believe the Lord told me to tell you, you know, to walk away. <laughs> walk away. Because a lot of times people get in the flesh and they, 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 they want to help you and, and you don't need their help. But here's what I want you to understand. Rocks are coming if you hadn't already had some. There, there are real life situations like cancers. There are broken relationships that break your heart. There are rocks, man, thrown in there that can crush that heart of yours. There are times that you get in car accidents. And everybody's like, well, I want to blame God because God wanted to get my attention. No, God don't give you a car. And well, I want to blame the devil because the devil just didn't want me to go to church. No, you had a car wreck. Right. You had a rock happen in your life. It happens. We live on this planet. Things are going to happen to us. It ain't God. It ain't the devil. We live on a sin-cursed earth, and there are rocks in this planet, and you're going to face some rocks. The problem is this. When you hold on to the rock, and you, hail, you hold on to that thing, and you won't let that thing go, and you pet that rock, and you make it a pet rock, and you nurse that rock, and you talk about that rock, and you talk about how this rock really hurt you, and you talk about how bad this rock really felt, and how these things happened in my life. You know what? You need to get rid of the rock. Amen. Yes. See, sometimes God plows us or we, we, we get the tiller out and we allow God to plow us or we plow ourselves. And, and when you start plowing, here's what I found. And you start digging it up, you'll find a rock in there. You'll find something in there that's always been there that maybe you even buried years ago that God said, listen, I need you to get that hurt out of your life. I need you to get that thing out of your life so that I can produce some more seed in you so we can grow some more crops. Here, I tell my wife this all the time. I flex my arm and I tell her all the time, I said, you know, grass don't grow on a rock, baby. <laughs> well, the, that wasn't that funny, y'all. The seed of God's Word don't grow on rocks. You can hear the Word and hear the Word and hear the Word, but that won't ever take root if you got rocks in there. Well, you don't know what they did to me. Yeah, I, I know what they're doing to you. I know you're allowing that rock to keep you from producing the crop that what God wants you to produce. Amen. There's going to be many people standing before the Lord one day, and I believe the Lord's going to say, listen, here, you did some great things. Come on in. We love you and all that goes. But I want to show you what you could have done had you got rid of those rocks. Wow. But you kept nursing that thing and holding on to that thing. I couldn't take you and propel you to the next thing because you got a bag of rocks that are holding you down. Here's what I'm telling you. Not, not only do you need to till up your soil to get rid of the path, you need to get rid of the rocks. And I can't say enough about the times that God gets the sifter out and God just starts doing this and He starts shaking things up a little bit and life starts coming at you. And then He starts finding these little things, that little attitude when you're real hungry. I got a little thing that says, I'm sorry for what I said when I was hungry. My wife says to me all the time, she goes, you better give me a taco or I'm going to scratch a dashboard. <laughs> Get you a taco, girl. She's in the nursery, I can say that. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Listen, in life there are mean places. I don't understand why a family's at a hospital with a seven-year-old with cancer. I don't get it. That's a big rock. That's a huge rock. But what you do with that rock determines how your heart's going to be down the line. If you love anyway and you forgive and you care and you do all that you know to do, and, and, and you, you, you may have to go to counseling to get rid of that rock. You may have to seek some, some wisdom to get rid of whatever's going on in your life. But those unforgiving places need to be removed because right. the seed won't grow if you have unforgiveness in your life. Amen. You have to forgive people to continually produce a crop. And you have to move on in life in order for you to produce a, 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 the great product that God wants you to produce. So I, I don't know who you are or who this is for, but I want to tell you, if you got a, if you got a rock in your life, you need to get rid of it. 
You need to remove it. You need to say, you know what? This is something that's been bugging me. This is something. I, I, I'll just be transparent with you. I had some issues with some people in my family. And I finally made a decision. Am I going to sit around being bitter and hurt and mad and upset about what they did? Or am I going to forgive them and love them? And I said, you know what? I'm going to love them again. I'm going to forgive them. I'm going to love them. I, I, got, I got people in my family who do stupid stuff. Nope, not me, but they do. And I have to go, what am I going to do with that? Well, I decided, you know what? I'm going to get the rock out of my heart so that God can produce the seed that he wants to produce and the crop that he wants to have. But even the bigger challenge isn't the rocks. The bigger challenge is keeping our hearts focused. Right. Because, man, there's Luke Bryan. There's a worship seminar. There's football's coming back around. There's football. I know people, that, I know men that can give me all the stats of a football game. They can tell me every quarterback. They can tell me everything. You ask them what Romans, John, what John 3, 16 says, they don't know what it means. I'm like, whoa. And, and I listen, listen, please don't misunderstand me. I understand how important football is. I understand how important things are. But if, we, if we're not careful, we'll let all the stuff in the world get in our heart to where our heart isn't hard toward anybody, but we're so busy doing all the, the cares of life and the worries and the concerns of life, and, and we want to put all these stats in our head to where we can no longer function and be what God and produce the crop that God wants us to produce because we got all this other stuff. Here's what I'm telling you. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word. Right. Not only just hear it, but they hear it, but they retain the word. And sometimes you hear the word one time, I got it. No, you don't. You got to hear that word a thousand times before it gets in there because it's got to travel from here to here. You got to say, I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. You got to say, I got to do, I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. You got to say, I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. To where all of a sudden it drops in your heart and then you start feeling it. You know what? I really can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. Right. So you got to keep your heart focused on the things that you need to focus on so that you can produce what it is God wants you to produce. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not telling you that God doesn't want you to have nice stuff. I'm not telling you God don't want you to have a million dollar home and a big house and all that. I'm not telling you God don't want to bless you. What I'm telling you is if you seek first the kingdom of God, he'll add all that other stuff to you. The problem is, is when we get sidetracked from the things that God wants in our heart to the things that we want in our heart and the things maybe the world's throwing at us that we forget, oh yeah, wait a minute, it's not about all that. It's about Jesus Christ and Him crucified. It's about having a relationship with God. It's about tilling up my heart. It's about getting the rocks out so that God can drop the seed in so that I can grow to the next place. So here's what I'm telling you. Don't let the thorns or the cares of life choke out what God wants to do in your life. See, if you have this incredible dream of what God wants to do and you put it on the shelf and you let other things distract you, you got to get that thing back off the shelf again. you got to say, wait a minute, I remember when God spoke this in my life and what God was going to do in my life. And listen, you got to forgive all those knuckleheads that hurt your feelings. you got to forgive all the people in the church that did the wrong thing to you. And you just got to say, you know what? I'm going to start over. I'm going to forgive them and I'm going to love God and I'm going to seek God first and then God's going to fulfill that that He wants to do in my heart and do in my life. Listen, don't let your heart get full of weeds so that you can't focus on the seed that God's planted in your life. Right, right. That's good preaching, whether you like it or not. It is. Amen. Listen, don't let, listen, you, you, you have to first hear the word. But once you hear the word, you also have to retain that word. Right. And see, most people, most people are pretty good about that. They go, well, you know, I heard the word, and you know what, that's a good word, and I, and I put it on the mirror in my bathroom, and I'm quoting that word every day, and I'm growing in the word, and I'm reading the word, I'm studying the word, I'm hearing the word. But, but it goes a little bit further. It says, you got to hear the word, you got to retain the word, and then you got to persevere to produce a crop. Right. Now, here's where I have a real problem. God said, this is what I want you to do. Boom, he drops the seed in. And you retain it. You have it. You know God put it in your heart. You know God said he was going to do something. And you know what God said he was going to do. But a year goes by. And it doesn't happen. And two years go by. And the guy ain't showed up yet. Or the girl ain't showed up you've been praying for. I don't know who we're talking to here. Hmm. Another year goes by. And the dream that you had that God said he was going to do in your life didn't happen. 
And through this life, you're like Joseph. You got thrown in the pit. <laughs> Your brothers disowned you. Everybody thought, you're a knucklehead. You're, you don't know what you're talking about. You might have been thrown in prison. <laughs> you might have had all kind of mishap. You may have had all kind of rocks thrown at you. In the process, let, let, let me make sure everybody understands this. When God drops something in your heart that He wants to do in your heart, I can promise you two things are going to happen. The devil's going to find out what got dropped in your heart, and he's going to come after you. So if you want to hear from God, you need to understand if you're hearing from God, you're trying to do something for God, you're trying to produce a crop, every weed that can spring up is going to try to spring up. Every distraction that can happen is going to happen and people are going to begin to throw rocks at you to keep from whatever it is you want to see happen, happen in your life. That's life. Deal with it. Tell yourself it's coming. Tell yourself I'm okay with that because greater is he that is in me than he that's within the world. Though, though the enemy besiege me, I will not fear for God is the right arm of my righteousness. And you tell yourself, you know what? I realize all this stuff's coming, but I'm going to be an overcomer every time because God is going to make me victorious. But here's what you've got to understand about this. You can, listen, not only do you, got to, you have to get the word in you, you have to hang on to that word. Right. The devil's going to come and people are going to come and try to steal the word of God out of your heart and the thing that God spoke to you. You've got to hang on to that word and then you've got to, you've got to also understand that you can't just retain the word. Right. You've got to go out here and pursue severe. Yes, I wrote it in my notes and I changed it because I thought, well, I don't really want to cuss in the pulpit. But I, I, So I, I changed it. Then I put it back in there and then I took it back out and I put it. So this is as far as I'll go as a cuss word. Here's, here's what I want you to say. you got to not only retain the word and guard the word, you got to work your butt off yes, yes. to produce a crop. Right. you got to work it. You gotta work it. Well, I don't know why God God said he was gonna do that. I don't know why God didn't do that. No, because you gotta work it. Yeah, but I thought he was gonna do it for me. No, he's not. Well, I thought he was gonna supernaturally just come and build a church and grow it to five thousand people. No, we gotta work our butt off to grow this church. You know why I'm gonna be here Saturday, pass out school spots, because I want to see this church grow. Whatever it is you want, whatever it is God's put in your, whatever seed God's dropped in your heart that He wants you to have and wants you to do, I'm going to make you a promise. You are going to have to hear the Word. You're going to have to retain the Word. Right. And then you're going to have to work your backside off in order for that to ever be fulfilled in your life. Right. Well, that just sounds like too much work to me. <laughs> well, see, here's what I understand about that. When God locks arms with you, He's like, you know what? You got faith. Show me your works. Yeah. Let's work this thing. Right. And if you work it, I'll, I'll pull up beside you and help you do it. I'll anoint what you're doing. You try to make it excellent, I'll make it even more excellent. I, because, see, God anoints excellence. God don't anoint people that are half-baked, thrown together, don't want to really really try. Right. I'm not being ugly. I'm just telling you like it is. Right. Yeah. You want to see a change in your life, you got to change your heart, and you have to retain the Word, but you have to work to make these changes happen in your life. I had a lady tell me last week, didn't attend this church, met her at a Chick-fil-A. And she was just sharing her heart with me a little bit, some things that were going on in her heart, things that were happening in her life. And she said, yeah, but I, I, really, I really don't want to do that. And when she said it, I thought, you telling me you really don't want to do that tells me you really ain't going to do this. So why are we talking? Because until we decide, not only do we want to retain the word and hear it and retain it, we got to work it. Amen. Amen. So this morning, if you want to change your heart, you got to decide, I'm going to plow it under. I'm going to plow it under. And as he's plowing and as I'm seeking God and seeking after the things of God. Then I'm going to, to remove those rocks. Because God's going to show you rocks, I right. promise you. Yeah. You're spending the time with the Lord. The reason why a lot of times we don't spend a lot of time with God is because when we do, God starts showing us that thing that we've been petting. Right. That rock, that pet rock. And God's going, you need to get rid of that, man. But as you, as you seek after God and He plows your heart and He gets the rocks out, and it gets your heart laser focused on what he wants you to do, what he wants you to become. And all hell's breaking loose around you. You can say, hey, I know I'm, I know I'm moving in the right direction. And, and then God will start dropping that seed in. And all of a sudden, you'll start producing a crop like you've never dreamed. 
and you're going to have to work it. Work it. Listen, Don and I have been married for 32 years, and you know what? In 32 years, it just came so easy. We just, we're still like giddy. No, we're not. We work that thing. She straightens me out, I straighten her out. We work it. We got a list, man. We got it on the mirror. It's what you need to do for me, and it's what I need to do for you. Let's work this thing. Raise kids and see if that ain't work. Whatever you're going to do, you're going to have to work it. But God wants to do some incredible things in you. But you got to let Him. And you got to open up your heart to receive what He wants to do.